Hi, this is David. In the last video, I showed you how to create an XUnit project and then use that project to write a unit test that tests functionality in your application. And if you remember, I actually created three tests because I wanted to test for uh, this, the function I was testing was just adding two numbers together. And I wanted to test if I added positive numbers together, if I added negative numbers together, and if I added a positive and a negative number together. Make sure each of those cases works. But there's a disadvantage to this. You'll notice that it's, it's kind of inefficient because most of the code is the same in those three tests. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just set a, create a generic test and pass parameters in uh, to account for the differences? And of course the answer is yes, we can do that. XUnit has a way of doing that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new class and I'll call this one uh, inline, or I'll call it how about math function tests inline data right here. I'll make it public. I'll make sure I have a using demo x unit here because that namespace is going to be used, uh, and I'll also make sure I'm using X unit as well, but in here I'm going to create a, a method that looks very much like this method. In fact, I'll just copy one of these right here and paste it in here. But instead of a fact, I'm going to do something called a theory, which is a feature of X unit that allows me to pass parameters in. And the parameters will go right here. I'll have int first number as a parameter passed in, int second number as a parameter passed in, and int expected result as a parameter passed in. You can probably guess what each one of these is. First number and second number are here, so I don't need those anymore. They're going to be passed in as parameters. And then the expected result is right here. I'm going to assert that the expected result equals the actual result I get back here from calling the function. Now the values that I pass in are done also as attributes. There's an attribute called inline data that's part of XUnit and I can pass in, I'll use the same values that I used over here. I said uh, what, 15 and 30 and then negative 15, negative 30 and then negative 15 and 30, and then of course the results of those. So 15, 30, 45. And what that says is I need to have the exact same number of arguments here as I have as input parameters here. So there's three input parameters, so my inline data must be an array of three numbers. Uh, I'll do, oops, control C right there. I'll do that three times and just modify this for my three test cases. So this says that if I pass in 15 and 30 as first number or second number, the expected result should be 45. If I pass in negative 15, negative 30 as the first number or second number, then the expected result should be negative 45. And if I pass in negative 15 and 30, then the expected result should be 15. And every other than that, it's exactly the same. So I've reduced the code considerably from this to this right here. Let me build it, make sure I don't have any typos. Okay. I like to leave this arrange up here just as a reminder that I didn't have to arrange anything. This was all passed in as an argument. And uh, let's go ahead and run this test. In fact, I'll run all the tests. It goes really fast. This is a good, it's a good practice to run them all, all the time. And in fact, that's a good incentive for you to keep your tests as short and in time as possible. So this one right here that's in math function test inline data, you can see it is here. That's the class. Remember it's hierarchical. Right here is the method, but underneath there's actually another level of hierarchy. The three tests that were run for that same method and the green check mark means that each one of those passed. One limitation of this is this only works for primitive types. I can pass in things like strings and numbers, but I can't pass in objects. 
If I want to pass in an object, there is a way to do that, and I will show that in the next video. This is David. Thank you for watching.